Valerie. Uh, welcome Hello. to the Nordic Data Science and Machine Learning Summit. It's a pleasure having you with us today. Thank you. Uh, before we go on into further questions, can you please tell us more about your background and area of expertise? Yes, so my background is mostly from academia. I uh, have a PhD in econometrics, in particular in time series analysis. And most of my research was focused on multivariate time series analysis with high frequency data, so financial time series data around the time when uh, various stock exchanges started already monetizing on their data back in the early 2000s, selling their uh, transactional data. So you could go and see, for example, how many times did IBM trade today and at what prices and at what times. So that's, that's what I did. So high frequency financial data. Uh, so I was in research for quite some time. Then I moved on to Siemens Wind Power, where mm -hmm. I spent about six years mostly looking at reliability engineering, forecasting um, reliability statistics for our wind turbines and components of wind turbines, mm -hmm. predicting number of failures and stuff like that. And then about a year ago, I moved to Lego, mm -hmm. where I'm uh, working in, a, in the corporate advanced analytics uh, team on various analytics projects. Mm -hmm. Quite impressive. So you just delivered a session, and we want to congratulate you on that, you. Um, on how to know your customers without knowing them. Yes. Sounds really interesting. Can you please tell us more about that? Yes. I think uh, there's way too much focus nowadays within data science and artificial mm -hmm. intelligence on how to provide a customized solution. Like uh, what kind of clothes you might want to buy, what kind of music you might want to listen, what kind of food mm -hmm. you might want to buy. And we, we thought about these algorithms making more and more of the decisions for ourselves. And I think that could mm -hmm. be to the extent where it becomes a little bit creepy and even counterproductive because in the end I don't want to have 50 different voices telling me this is the clothes you might want to like and this is mm -hmm. the food you might want to buy. I mean, it can, it, it can become way too much. So I think in some sense, we're starting wanting to know way too much about our customers. It, it, maybe it's not ill-intended that we want to provide a customized service, but it gets a little bit too much. So I think mm -hmm. we have to limit ourselves to what do I really want to know and how do I provide a, a, an overall good service uh, so that I improve not just the particular area, but overall potentially well-being of that person. And that goes a little, be, a little bit beyond my actual talk, but I think we're focusing too much on customized solutions rather than thinking about how do we overall make sure that this per because in the end we're dealing with people. And these people, they they have feelings and emotions mm -hmm. and they don't only care about the clothes and this and that. So we pushed it a little bit too hard, I think. So I think we need to limit that a little bit. Go back and say, well, what it is that I really need to know about these people and not just collect any kind of sensitive, potentially sensitive information. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, um, let's talk a little bit about artificial intelligence. The theme of the day is from data first to I first. So according to your opinion, how mature is I by now? And what does it exactly mean for organizations when we say I first? Yes. Um, and yeah, I think there's a lot of hype. Everybody agrees with that. <laughs> and um, uh, I've been thinking now, if you take a hazelnut, for example, mm -hmm. and you cannot break it with your own hand, you use a stone. But mm -hmm. we didn't call the stone artificial strength. Neither we called cars artificial horsepower. So now you can say computers can do other things better than we do, like a stone can break a nut better than we do. And now we've suddenly hyped it up to something, you know, otherworldly kind of. And, and yes, computers are pretty good at uh, shuffling data around and doing calculations. But uh, that they're not, and, and, and the impact can be tremendous. So a lot of people can lose jobs and all of that. But calling it intelligence, I think it's a little bit too much because it's not intelligence. I, I think computers, uh, curiosity is one thing. Have you ever seen a curious algorithm? I mean, you, you can build curiosity in algorithms by building it into their uh, loss function, including a reward for straying away from your mm -hmm. aim, kind of. But that's not curiosity. I have a two-year-old uh, boy. 
he keeps asking hundreds of times every day, what is this and what is that? And he just is curious. That's how he learns. Uh, I don't know how this curiosity comes about. It's very natural, of course, in children. And I think until we get to that, and I think curiosity has something to do with consciousness and all of, mm -hmm. all of these concepts. And uh, right now, I think, yes, cognitively, you can have computers doing very well on standardized exams, uh, processing huge amounts of data, behaving in complex environments like uh, auto autonomous uh, mm -hmm. driving. But that's more or less as much as a stone is, is artificial strength. Uh, it, it, that's to me kind of the comparison. They don't have the, yeah, they don't have this curiosity, which mm -hmm. I think is part of being intelligent. If you're not curious, I don't think you're intelligent. Uh, last year in the Data Innovation Summit, in last year's edition, um, um, there was a discussion about the fact that data scientists are actually creating <coughs> machine learning algorithms so they can replace them. Mm -hmm. So, and, and um, what is your opinion on this? Are yeah. they repla replaceable? Yes, I think to some extent, I mean, you have services uh, like Data Robot, for example, nowadays, okay. where <coughs> it's, it's almost like a drag and drop interface. Um, you start with some data set, you give it to this data robot, it runs all kinds of combinations of models and it tells you, well, this is the best model and this is what you should do. So in some sense, you, you don't need all the, all the wranglers, coders and all of that. You just, it all, it's all there and it just gives you, that's the best model. So to some extent, I think, uh, a lot of the work that we do is, 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 in a sense, repetitive, and that can definitely be automated. So I think it's going back to being imagination and, and, and curiosity, which I think is going to be difficult to replace. But if we just keep running the same models over and over again, um, mm. then I think that can definitely be replaced mm. and automated. Okay, one, one final question. Uh, three hypes much discussed today. Yes. Uh, I, machine learning and data science, how can we differentiate? Well, I can't, you know, in a way, uh, to me, it's, it's really about part of the hype. And uh, I like very much what uh, Andrew, uh, uh, so the former chief scientist of Baidu said that deep learning became so hyped because it kind of sounds so cool. It's so deep. Um, so it's, it's really branding, you know, it's marketing, it's branding. Um, if you think about it, the field where I come from in statistics and econometrics, a lot of these techniques, uh, they were not called that. A regression was a regression, logistic regression was a logistic regression. We had maximum likelihood estimators, confidence bounds. We have gradient descent has been around for many, many, many years. All this neural network, I don't think there's much novelty. I mean, in terms of being able to do it now is quite impressive because it requires a lot of computational power. But in terms of the sophistication and complexity of the models uh, as such, I don't see there's much uh, novelty as such. So I think it's very much about hype and rebranding of known things. That's not to say that they haven't been advances, but a lot of these have been fueled simply by uh, the increase in computational power rather than anything else. Valerie, it was a pleasure. We are happy that we had you for the Nordic Data Science and Machine Learning Summit. Thank you. Thank you.